Hi y'all, welcome to the art box. I'm going to show you how I make uh, paper mache clay. There's quite a few things involved in making it, at least my formula. So I'm going to turn you around, I'm going to show you my stuff, and then I'm going to set you up so that I can show you how I mix it. So let's have some fun. Okay, we're going to make paper mache clay. And what we need is a bucket that you hear I'm having trouble with. So, need a bucket and a... Oh, that's a new toy that I got last year. So it's not new, but I was excited about that. Um, you need a bag of flour. You need dry joint compound, salt, wet joint compound, uh, wallpaper glue, school glue, tight bold three glue um concentrated bleach water liquid cornstarch uh, i mean liquid starch liquid starch and linseed oil and then fiber so uh, this is everything i i'm going to be using when i say fiber you can use um if you make your own paper pulp you can do that because that's the same thing but I have everything here that I've got to put in there, so I'm going to set you up on like a tripod thingy and I'm going to start mixing with you. Okay, let's begin. We need a bag of flour. So, let's put in a bag of flour. There'll be a little cloud going on here. So that's one bag of flour. Then we need about two cups of dry joint compound. Doesn't everybody keep that on hand? So. Let's do about two cups dry joint compound. That's almost two cups. And these are just guess, you know, if you if you're off a little bit or a little too more too much, it's okay. All right. Then I need a fourth of a cup of salt. Now, in my opinion, the salt you can add more if you want. What the salt does is the salt keeps it from becoming um, rancid quickly. So, okay, that salt's not going to open. Okay. My salt has gotten hard on me. That's because we live in Florida. My salt already took up the humidity. Let's open a new box of salt. So, about about a fourth of a cup of salt if I can get it out of here. But in my opinion, you cannot have too much salt. So. I might actually make it more like a half a cup of salt because it I'm not going to eat it so I'll be okay all right now what I need is about two cups of wet joint compound now I already just scooped some out it's probably more than two cups because I also want to use what's left in this bucket here if it's okay, which it is. So I want to scrape the last of what's in this old bucket out. Because you can never, I don't think you can ever have too much joint compound in this recipe. 
And I'll see, I mean, I'm sure you can, but. So that is wet joint compound. So it's already pre-mixed joint compound that you can get at the hardware store, okay? So then you need wall, one cup of wallpaper glue, which is this stuff. It's pinkish. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of mix some of this um, fiber stuff in and kind of mix this together a little bit. And the reason why I say that is because... See, I'm mixing it together a little bit. A little bit of a cloud smoke. Because I'm going to go ahead and add some water. Not all. You need a gallon of water. I'm not adding all my water, just some of my water. About half my gallon. And I'm going to mix this up a little bit before I put the glue in. Okay, now, get my glue. I said I needed a cup of wallpaper glue. It's pinkish in color. It does not matter. So, these are half cup measures. So I'm going to put one in. And then I'm going to set this in another measuring cup because I'm not wasting that. I'm going to put water on it. I want every drop of glue. Okay. So then it calls for... just got my thing sticky calls for school glue. Two school glues because you need about a cup of school glue. So any school glue would be fine. Just have to dump that in there too. If you find that to be a little clunky, dump it and get another one. <laughs> because that happens with school glue. Just dump it and grab another one. Now what I do with this is I actually add a little water to my glue container so I get every ounce of glue too and I shake it up good and dump that in there I want all my glue I might want more of those Some more water in the glue bottle. Okay. So now I need my tie bolt glue. Tie bond glue. This is stuff. Get it at the hardware store. And I need roughly, and that stuff looks really, I'm going to shake this stuff up a little bit. I should have pre-shook it for you guys. It's 
been a long time since I made this stuff. Been about a year. Other stuff got in the way. Life got in the way. So I need about a cup of this. Then you over pour, it's okay. That's not the end of the world. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add some more water because in the past, if I remember right, if I'm not careful, my glues will gum up and I'll have myself a problem. I'm not adding the liquid starch yet because that really gets icky. All right, let's see what we got going on here. It's important to get this mixed some. You don't want to do it too fast. It says liquid um, concentrate, which I get this little bottle at the Dollar Tree. You need about a tablespoon of it, so I do about a cap full and maybe a smidge more. Again, that is just to keep it from getting moldy. Some people prefer to use um, a scented bleach make it smell better. I don't care. Alright, mix that up a little bit. Alright, now, here's my list. We did bleach. We put water in it. Now we're going to put um, linseed oil. I think it just, I don't know what it's used for exactly, but I think it's more or less um, just to make it um, smoother. If that makes any sense. I'm supposed to do two tablespoons of linseed oil. So, I got a one-fourth cup here, so I'm going to do part of that. Now, I'm not going to do a one-fourth cup, but I'm going to do what I think looks like two tablespoons. That's close. That's close enough. Maybe I'll do it just a smidge more. I think it just helps with um, um, the smoothness of the, of the stuff. I want, I want every drop of stuff. Okay, so what's left? We did linseed. What's left is the rest of the water and the liquid cornstarch. So it's just liquid cornstarch. It's hard to find it. At least I had a hard time finding it. I found it at a family dollar, I think it was. So I need a cup of that. But I pour this in while the mixer's going, so. Let me go back over my list here. We did flour, we did dry, corn, uh, uh, dry joint compound, we did salt, we did wet corn, uh, wet, what did I say corn? We did wet joint compound, we did wallpaper glue, we did school glue, we did high bolt glue, we did the bleach, we got finished the water, cornstarch, linseed oil, so. Let me pour the remaining of my water in. 
this is the I, when I was done with the glue cup I mean the glue one for um, I'm trying to get all that wallpaper glue out because that stuff costs money it all costs money to make this stuff I want every bit of that glue if possible I want every bit of that glue That's the rest of that glue. We pour in the remaining water. That's one gallon of water. And as we begin to do this, we will pour in the liquid cornstarch. Okay, now the fun part is adding the fiber fill or your plate paper pulp if you so desire. The fiber fill is the same thing, it's recycled, it's recycled paper. So you just start adding this stuff, pumping it up and adding it. It takes a little while to do this. I'll do a little bit here, then I'm going to shut off the video and bring you guys back after I get it all because I have to get in with my hands but I'll do a little bit here to show y'all you just work this in Some people say you want the consistency of oatmeal. Um, you want it thicker than oatmeal. Um, you want it basically consistency of a clay. I don't know how else to say it. You're making clay. So I don't want oatmeal. And it, this takes a little while. So I'm going to stop you guys, bring you guys back after I get it made up. Alright you guys, we're back. It's almost done. You want it to be a consistency that you can pick it up with one hand, kind of roll it around, and it really not stick to your hand. Okay, this this is still a little wet to me, okay? I, I know what I'm wanting to feel. It feels really nice, though, because it's something I like the feel of this in my hands. So what I have to do is add this stuff in by hand now, because at some point, the mixture gets harder to use, So and you don't know what you're feeling for. So this is a clean bucket that I'll be putting it in when I'm done. It, it won't matter that this is in it now because it's dry. Because what's the worst is going to happen is if this is still too damp, by the time I put it in the second bucket, the worst that will happen is when I open the bucket, there'll be moisture, and then I'll blot it up with a paper towel or pour it off. Hopefully, that won't happen. It's only happened to me once where there was a little bit of moisture. This is not the part I enjoy because... This is, this is not like kneading dough for biscuits. This is a little bit thicker. Basically, I'm trying to reach the stuff from underneath and pull it to the top. So if there's any moisture, I'm getting it out. And I'm just adding this dry stuff as I'm kneading it. 
basically, just like I said, trying to reach stuff below. Almost like folding it over in a bucket. But it's almost there. I mean, it's not sticking to the size of the bucket so much anymore. And the recipe I have is not, it's my recipe. It's not, I'm not saying that's how you have to make it. There are lots of recipes on the internet and on YouTube, other people make it. And their recipes work fine too. It's what works for you. This works for me. This works for me really well. I had some of this in a bucket almost a year later and it was not moldy. It smelled a little strong, a little ripe, uh, fermented like, not, not like stinky ripe, not like rotten eggs. It's almost there. I'm gonna use the last of this to and when you when you put start putting it in at the end you want to make sure this fiber if you're using the pre-made fiber you want to make sure it's really really aerated like fluffy you don't want to put in like hard chunks you don't want to put hard chunks in you want to actually break it up that way it will incorporate better this is a workout on the on the arms Almost there. I'm gonna bring you back when I got it completely mixed by hand. All right, you guys, final step: putting it in the smaller bucket. Basically, it is done now because I can make that into a into a uh, shape, and it will hold it. It'll hold its shape now. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is done. The worst that will happen is there will be some moisture when I open the container again or it will get a little dry and then I can just I can just put a little water in it. But basically I just now got to put it all in this bucket. And it's heavy too because it's wet clay. And I pack it in tight. I don't want no air down in there. So I do pack it in tight. I want little air as possible. That's why I move it to a smaller bucket. I mean, I can store it in this five gallon, but I want as little air as possible in my bucket. I think that's what, I think that helps with not making it gross. I could be wrong, but you know. Now, if you're wondering, anybody who knows anything about uh, clay and sculpting, I do sculpt with this. I have made some really pretty stuff. Um, and if you know anything about, about um, clay, and I know nothing, <laughs> I just know enough to do this. What I use for a slip, see right here, I don't know if you can see this, but this is either joint compound or glue that they'll get mixed in as I work on it. If you know anything about slip, which is, I guess, uh, an, uh, when you're working with clay, you use it to help smooth out clay. What, how I, what, what I use for slip is I take the pre-mixed joint compound, put it in a little jar, add a little bit of water until I get the consistency I want it, and that's what I use as a slip to go along with this. Now, I got that done. So there's my, I don't know if this is a three gallon bucket or two and a half gallon bucket. It's filled to the top. I will close it up. Now I'll pull out like a hunk of this and put it in a small container because I'm going to make beads out of it. I use it for everything. Um, because I don't want to, I don't want to constantly open this container. I, I want to keep it sealed as much as possible. So I will, I have a smaller container that I will put some in probably a cup to two cups worth and work from that until I need more but if you like what you saw uh, like subscribe 
share, tell a friend. And um, thank you for joining us in the art box today, or joining or joining me in the art box. Um, I want to say keep on crafting. See you all in the next video.